Oh, hey there. I didn't see you. Just kidding. A little cheesy, I know, but it is Wisconsin after all. And I apologize. I will leave the good jokes to our current hosts. Happy anniversary, Discover Wisconsin. 35 years. Today on Discover Wisconsin, we are traveling along the Bourbon Trail. Join me as I visit four of Wisconsin's best craft distilleries in search of what makes Wisconsin bourbons so special. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. Central Standard Distillery was once a scrappy upstart, but is now thriving in the heart of Milwaukee. The distillery's craft house and kitchen is the perfect place to gather. Hey, Eric. Andrea. What's up? Hi, how are you? I'm good, what are you doing here? Just having lunch, I live right near here. What are you doing? I'm filming for Discover Wisconsin. You are? Yeah. Oh, oh hey, Brandon. Don't look, just don't look in the camera. I gotta get back to filming, but enjoy your salad, okay. enjoy your drink, and we'll catch up later. The distillery's craft house and kitchen is the perfect place to gather for a delicious house cocktail, a bite to eat off their extensive menu, or even some great looking merch. Today I got the chance to sit down and talk with- Eric, can you go finish your lunch? Okay, let's just move downstairs to the founders room to talk with the founders themselves, Pat and Evan. How did Central Standard come to be? Um, we would get together, we had normal adult day jobs and really wanted to start a side business. Um, we thought it'd be a lot of fun. We love Milwaukee and, and this part of Wisconsin. And so we would get together over bourbon and rye whiskey that we would pick up like on our travels. We got together one night, we're like, hey, this, this is what brings us together. We're actually really passionate about, about spirits. So let's start a distillery. I think the first question was, do you know how to make booze? Uh, we know how to drink it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no idea. How to make it. So, so we had a pretty big hole in the business plan when we started. Mm -hmm. That was when we opened in 2014. Was there a moment in the process where you thought, "Oh, we are doing this now"? Yeah, I think for once we got the doors open and people started coming through and tasting our spirits, that was like, "Oh, yeah, we're really doing this, right?" But we just kept going, and the community supported us, and we've gotten a ton better. We've won a lot of awards for what we're doing now. Um, it's our full-time job now, where it was a part-time job before. So once we got that going, I think we really stepped into it there. Well, I understand you have another space where you do a lot of your distilling. So yeah, tell me about that. That's where we make a lot of our, our large scale, scale production um, and where a lot of our innovation happens. Packaging, that's where we do all the bottling and labeling. We made it to the production distillery. I'm here with Pat and now Jim. Jim, how'd you get roped into well, all Well, I think similarly to how Pat and Evan started the business, I think I've known them for a little while uh, over my days. Two great guys that have started a great place and hopefully I can make it just a little bit better. So we're, we're always pushing our distillers and our guys to have fun with things. And we've tried to come up with some new and innovative products like our Pour Ready that's coming now. So we're trying to push the envelope a little bit of what we can do here. And some of it works, some of it doesn't. Um, we've had to spit a few things out every now and then. But uh, other than that, it's been pretty <laughs> good. not too many. All right. Well, it is a Friday. And I think it's time for me to have a drink. And I hear your bartender is going to teach me how to make a cocktail. Yeah, Jake's going to teach you how to make something, uh, something great for the weekend. All right, I'm here with Jake, manager at Central Standard. Jake, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, thank you for stopping in. Well, you're the expert here. I feel like we should make a cocktail, right? Can you yeah. teach me how to make a cocktail? Yeah, absolutely. Sticking with our Wisconsin roots, um, we will be doing a Wisconsin Old Fashioned. Cheers. Thank you. Mmm. That's very good. I wish I could stay longer. I'll just have to make time to come back when the weather is nice. I mean, just look at that view. 
Hey, Discover Wisconsin, it's your old friend, Linda Carey Predovsky, wishing you an amazing, incredible, happy 35th year anniversary. I can't believe it. Where does the time go? What an honor and privilege it has been to work with you across the years. Happy anniversary. Welcome back to Wisconsin's Bourbon Trail. The next stop for us today is Ledge Rock Distillery in Fond du Lac. This family farm is located along the Niagara Escarpment, which gives this distillery its name and plenty of pure limestone filtered water to work with. I got the chance to sit down with Jay and Heidi Retzer and talk with them about beginning their journey as a craft distillery. This place is really cool and I'm excited to talk all things bourbon with you. But first, how did you get the inspiration for opening up and running your own distillery? I stumbled into this craft distilling world that was already evolving in Wisconsin and found out that they were, in a lot of cases, using locally sourced grains from local farmers. We are small farmers, mm -hmm. and so we have the exact ingredients needed to make a lot of the spirits that, that are being made. A lot of bourbons are made with corn, rye, and barley. Um, we don't typically grow rye on the farm here, but we grow soft red winter wheat. And so that soft red winter wheat gives it a, almost an earthiness to the whiskey. Um, and, and we like that. We, we feel we can actually release our whiskeys just a little bit earlier because of that wheat being in there. Were you prepared for how much work it would be to run your own distillery? I think so. Um, <laughs> You're like, it's not that hard, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I sometimes worry about what I'm doing to my family uh, because it is a, it's a family-run business, right? Mm -hmm. So um, all of us are up here working. But, you know, you go into something like this, it's not, it's not a background that we came from. And so there was, a, there was a little bit of added stress just trying to figure all of that out. I'm, I'm just really proud of the fact that um, this is, we're, we're working together very well. If you knew my family, you would never think I would be a distiller because it, this just wouldn't be something they would think about doing and uh, very straight laced. But anyway, um, right before my dad died, I don't know why, he called me and told me he was proud of me. He knew that this was his dream and he was supporting him. Wow. He's very proud of you. That's so sweet. Sorry. No, that's so great. What do you think he would say about this moment right now and where you're at with the distillery? He'd be good with it. Even my mother-in-law comes up and helps with the vendor fairs, with carting the vendors. And truthfully, all of our help is really family. Well, and your son Bryce, is he's a hard worker. <laughs> yeah, so do you think he's gonna stay with this for a while? It seems like he's very passionate. Yeah, he basically is our, well, he's our head distiller and our only distiller. Um, <laughs> we're, we're a pretty small operation, so from doing the mashing to the fermenting to running the stills, um, he's got that down pat. That's, that's, his, that's his strength, but I have total confidence in him. He's, he's always been a really good equipment operator uh, on the farm, and that's translated to the distillery also. Bryce took some time out of his busy day as a distiller to show me behind the scenes of how Ledrock makes its array of spirits. All bourbons begin with heating a mixture of grains and water, like a big batch of the funkiest oatmeal I've ever smelled. This is called the mash. Once the bourbon mash is ready, it's moved to the fermenters to start getting boozy. This is where yeast is added or pitched into the mixture, which will begin to eat the sugars and produce a simple natural alcohol called ethanol. From there, the liquid is strained out and sent to the stills to go through a process where it's heated again and the resulting vapors are collected as it recondenses into a purified distillate. This process is done until the desired proof is reached when it is finally transferred into barrels for aging to begin. Simple, right? Thanks to the Retzers, I'm leaving Ledrock with a better understanding of the basics of distilling. Turning a farm into a distillery is some true Wisconsin innovation at work. Be sure to check out The Cabin Podcast, the official podcast of Discover Wisconsin. Stay tuned because coming up next, we're headed to the Henry Farmstead that's home to J. Henry & Sons award-winning bourbons. Welcome back to Discover Wisconsin. This is Wisconsin's Bourbon Trail. The Henry Family Farm in Dane, Wisconsin has been in operation since 1946. I arrived at the Henry Family Farm to meet with Joe Z. Henry. 
Explain to me what J. Henry & Sons is all about. This is my family's third generation seed farm. My grandpa bought this place in 1946. We still raise about 1,500 acres of seed corn today. We started making our own whiskey using heirloom grains that we grow right here on our farm. So this is our W335A, not an extremely sexy name, but it is a seed corn varietal. And so this was developed in 1939 and then raised by my grandfather on our property from the mid 40s um, until the mid 70s. And when we started this project, we wanted to use something that my grandfather had grown on our property that had some of the idea of terroir that you apply with wine. It really just means kind of from the land. So we're trying to capture the entire flavor of our land, our region, and give that to you in a, in a bottle of whiskey. And you're teaching a lot of people that you can make amazing bourbon right here in Wisconsin. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, well, I'm ready to do some work. So I know you have some blending that we're gonna do. Yeah, And definitely. that's in the Rick House? Yep, that's in the Rick House. All right, let's go. Sounds good. So each one of these is a different barrel sample um, that we've pulled. They're all kind of different ages, so maybe like four to seven years mm -hmm. old. Um, we're gonna try a couple of them, uh, write some notes down, uh, do our sensory analysis, find some similarities, pick some stuff that you like, and then we're gonna make a little prototype. It's pretty nice. I think you did a really good job. Thank you. So I'm glad you were able to kind of pick some of those sweeter barrels, some of those more intense barrels, maybe some stuff that might not be good on its own, but it all kind of works together. So cheers, congratulations. Cheers. This Thank is your you. first J. Henry blend. <laughs> now it's time to head back to the farmhouse and meet the parents, Liz and Joe. If I understand correctly, you were the first place in Wisconsin that did tours. The first place that did bourbon specific tours because the first question that many people had was they didn't think you could make bourbon outside of Kentucky. So we really felt it was a valuable thing to share that what we're doing is value-added agriculture, but it's also a passion work both for him and now our sons. We've been very fortunate because we've had a lot of opportunities to work with chefs and restaurants, bars and bartenders. Some of the most fun we've had is doing outstanding in the field dinners or just doing Saturdays and celebrating people's birthdays or promotions or retirements as well. Yeah, well, I'm ready to taste this award-winning yeah, whiskey. I am too. Should we do it? Yes. All right, let's bring Joe Jr. back in here. So I'm going to talk about our uh, annual limited edition anniversary blend release. And I, I think it's the best product that we make, mostly because I, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little biased. <laughs> um, and what we do with this is kind of a unique blending process where we blend everything together and then let it kind of rest uh, before bottling. So that allows everything to marry a little bit more and give the product a little bit more depth and complexity. So it's like the best of the best. Oh yeah, that's really good. Okay, so this is uh, our small batch blend. It's a blend of about uh, 20 barrels. The trick is, and Joe and Liz are very good at it, blending the barrels that complement each other. It's really uh, a universal bourbon. It's wonderful for cocktails. Yeah, wow. that's delicious. <laughs> Game over. It's delicious. You guys can go home. We'll just yeah. drink now. All right. Who knew? The truly perfect blend turned out to be the Henry family themselves. I can't wait to taste the next J. Henry release for myself. Hello friends, I'm Connie He, former executive director of the Eagle River Chamber of Commerce. Congratulations on 35 years. I clearly remember when Dick started the program back in 1987. Congratulations again and hopefully the next 35 years go as well as the first did. Thanks for joining us on Wisconsin's Bourbon Trail. Tucked in the vineyards of Cambridge, our last stop today is at Dancing Goat Distillery. I got to meet with Dancing Goat's founder, Nick, in his tasting room to get the scoop on what he's all about. All right, Nick, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming, it's great to have you. Yeah, well you have this gorgeous space here. Thank you. Very popular distillery. How has Dancing Goat evolved over the years? Started off really centered here in the tasting room. We became a little bigger than we were able to provide service and we really need to focus on, we're a real fact and we're looking to sell whiskey all over the world and that's really what we really want to focus on. And I think the, the most important 
difference for me is that we've switched to a model that focuses on uh, consumer education. We want to connect with consumers. We want to teach them about their palates. We want to teach them about our spirits. We want to teach them about the phenomenal terroir of Wisconsin and what it does for spirits here. And it's not about buying my whiskey all the time or our gin all the time or our rum all the time. It's about knowing why you like what you do and taking the lessons you learn here into the world so you can buy more intelligently and you can make your own drinks. So should we go learn about the whiskey? Let's go learn about the whiskey. All right, let's do it. Nick really takes care to make sure visitors understand the distilling process and is even introducing a gin academy where visitors can distill a batch of gin for themselves. But today, we're talking about bourbon. Nick has assembled an impressive collection of bottles in what he calls his spirits vault, and he agreed to teach me a few things about how to taste bourbons like a pro. This room is really cool. Can you walk me through like a mini tasting session? I'd love to. Bourbon is, is very specific criteria in how it's made. It's always made in a brand new barrel, and so the oak is really present, and then it always has corn in it at a high percentage. The first things you usually look for is oak, vanilla, and caramel. Those notes are the most predominant in all bourbons, mm -hmm. and so that's a great place to start looking. The other thing to keep in mind when you're tasting alcohol is that alcohol often interferes with our sinuses that are, you know, creating the signals that give us the illusion of smelling things. And so one thing that you can do is if things are escaping you or eluding you, is you can put a couple drops of water in there, often it'll open it up. And so then instead of smelling alcohol, the alcohol is stable as a liquid, and you're smelling the other stuff that's flashing. Mm -hmm. And so those are great, what I call trading notes. So on this one. A little vanilla. Little vanilla, perfect. I'm so good at this, or I just heard you talk about vanilla being in this one. But it is in there, you know, and, yeah, it, it will it. Always, yeah. and all bourbons should have, yeah. otherwise it's a bad bourbon. All right. So these bourbons, sometimes you get a little solvent note off the top, and that's usually the mark of a very well-aged bourbon. Yeah, I really liked that bourbon, that was great. Our stocks of this are very young. This was our, these bottles were our prototype barrels. And that's the fun thing about whiskey is every barrel's unique and every barrel's interesting. Speaking of barrels, that's your favorite part of the job, and I know you have a little surprise for us. I do, so I got permission to let you guys into the Rick House. So this is an actual physical Rick House, which is IP that's patented by a company out of Kentucky. The main thing to realize about this is not actually building, it's a rack. And that allows the terroir, the elements, to really affect the, the product that we have inside of here. So what we're really looking for is a building that creates microclimates in terms of humidity and temperature. The other thing is it's built to ventilate, it's built to respirate in one direction. And so what we're looking for is, is variance and, and consistent aging over time. And so this is where the aging process happens. So how important is that? The aging process is the most important thing. That's what turns whiskey into, into gold, mm -hmm. metaphorically, but literally that's where all the color comes from and pretty much all the flavor. And then how do you know when a barrel is ready? Like how do you know that it's aged enough? That one's ready. So it starts like leaking a little bit? When you, what you start seeing is when you, you're looking for a good balance between tannin and ethanol. And so what we're really looking for is we're trying to lose the blue quality or the quality of graininess. And we want to have a good enough color where, where it can be substantial in a glass. Yeah. I think all that's left is seeing your dancing goat dance moves. I mean, yeah. if the dance floor yeah. is ready for me, I'm ready for the dance floor. Oh, dancing goat. Dancing goat. Dancing goat. Dancing goat. Dancing go, 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 dancing go,